Hello, my soccer members. With a day delay, let's talk about the Copa America quarterfinals. This time I'm gonna talk about them individually in this video and not use the short videos that I did before because there's only four games. So I think I should be able to do that. And again, just as a heads up, I have not seen any of this live, but I rely on highlights and what I hear. So this is what you're gonna get from me too. Also, before we go in medias res, you can see the Copa America jersey review up already, reviewing all the jerseys, ranking them from worst to best. And you can also, speaking of jersey, I'm still wearing my blue Columbia away jersey because the yellow one that I've ordered two weeks ago is stuck in the mail somewhere. It has been out for delivery since July the 4th. I have to do some calls today because it really annoys me. I hope that when we talk about the semifinals, I will have somewhere a yellow Colombia jersey in there because Colombia will most likely play in yellow against Uruguay or will, they will for sure play in yellow against Uruguay, which is of course the bad of the two semifinals. The other one is a replay of the opening match between Argentina and Canada. Canada did the upset of Venezuela and Argentina almost got upset themselves. We also had three games going straight to penalties, which is mostly down to the format. After 90 minutes in Copa America, at least up until the final, it goes straight to penalties. On one part, I understand it, you know, player welfare, blah, blah, blah. You don't want to put an additional 30 minutes onto them. On the other side, and Copa America has been doing this for a while. Comable soccer is very low scoring. So the likelihood of draws is very big and I feel that with the 90 minutes that most teams are just headed for the draw anyway. Yes, there was one that was a late equalizer in there, but you know, it just doesn't quite feel right after 90 minutes. It also, to me, devalues the competition, the oldest competition, the one that should be the second up there. In my personal ranking, it's not the second, although it should be simply by the quality of the teams in there. So yeah. Just a thought, maybe this is something you could change. Play an overtime period as well. In any case, I would say we'll get started. We'll get started with the two semifinals in Texas that were played Thursday and Friday local time. However, European time, it was Friday morning and Saturday morning. Of course, the first one was favorites Argentina taking on Ecuador in Houston, of course, horrible pitch. And this is something I really want that for the World Cup we don't see these awful pitches that just laid over the turf. And also, what's up with the goals in Copa America? They look weird. They look really weird. Those are not proper goals. This is just like they have been wheeled in from a practice field. Don't like that as well. The look and the feel of this Copa America is not good overall. Not good is also what Argentina looked like. Honestly, on the balance of play, Ecuador probably should have advanced. And it was also down. They played Messi again, but Messi didn't look fit. He was more or less walking around. There was barely in a sprint. Yes, he picked up an injury in a second group stage game. And then he missed the one against Peru and now he's back. But if he's not full, why play him? I mean, you played all right against Peru, I would say. Yes, Ecuador is at the moment a different proposition. Ecuador put Argentina back foot and had quite a few chances. However, against the run of play, Lisandro Martinez gives Argentina a halftime lead. Ecuador had a huge chance in the 62nd minute to grab an equalizer, but Anna Valencia puts the penalty on the post and it's a very late on that Rodriguez gets an equalizer. So the penalty is goes. Argentina go first, however, Messi tries to lob it, panic it, and it goes right onto the crossbar. However, he's bailed out big time by Emi Martinez once again, who is the penalty hero for Argentina. He saves the one by Menu, he saves the second one by Minda. Meanwhile, Arbeit and McAllister can convert. Yeboa pulls her back, then it's Montiel, Caicedo, and Otamendi sends Argentina to the semi final as expected, but it was not easy. And we really have to ask does Messi need to play every single time? Probably he doesn't. So, while Ecuador could not upset the world champions, Canada did so against Venezuela. Venezuela team that has been one of the stars of the group stage. I mean, the way they run through a tournament, they had nine wins, all of them fully deserved and playing great stuff in the process. However, this time, even without Tejan Buchanan, who I think who suffered a fractured tibia in training, Canada looked really sharp, having many chances, taking the lead in the 30th minute through Scheffelberg, the replacement for Buchanan, but I think Jonathan David could have had two in the first half as well. Yes, it was an open game. This was probably the best game of them all. Venezuela all also, but the bigger ones were definitely with Canada. And if Canada would have had a 2-0 halftime lead, would not have been unjust. However, 
in the second half, Venezuela get the equalizer. It was actually a great goal by Rondon, almost from the halfway line where he just watches goalie being out and beautiful lob over him into the net. It nicely hits also the roof of the net from the inside. And yes, Canada cannot find another winner. So again, the penalties it goes. And this was a really weird penalty shootout. Venezuela going first. And it was seemingly every other penalty had to be missed. And it was really David because you know Rodon converts, John, uh, John David converts, but Herrera misses. But then Millar immediately is also saved. Then the next to convert, the next to again miss. The next to convert, so after five, it's 3 3. And then Angel sees his penalty saved, and Kone sends Canada sensationally to the semifinal. Canada, best conquer the curve team at this Copa America under Jesse Marsh. They are really showing good stuff. I think when I called them the Austria of the Copa America, I was not that wrong. They play very similarly and now they're getting a feel of it. And I wouldn't be surprised if they give Argentina a hard time again. Of course, Argentina are the big favorites. And yes, I really bemoan the format where, you know, why do they meet in the semifinal again when they just met in the group stage? But hey, that's it. I guess they want to restrict travel, although it doesn't make much sense either. Yes, Group C and Group D were more placed on the West Coast and now everything moves towards the East Coast. But congratulations, Canada. Commiserations to Venezuela. I honestly think they would have deserved a semifinal, but maybe they will get the first World Cup berth. I think they're good enough. They are six if not seven teams qualifying from common ball. So I think it should be time for Venezuela to qualify. A young Venezuelan team, watch out for them. Then we had what I call the Darien Derby because of the Darien gap that kind of separates Colombia and Panama. And for neighbors, I don't think they play it that often against each other. Panama, of course, was a sensation from Group C, eliminating the United States. That no one expected, to be honest. But any hopes of getting an upset over their neighbors were swiftly dashed. Let's put it this way. And James Rodriguez playing like he did in 2014. And yes, I guess in common ball it is not as physical or athletic as it is in Europe because there his club career never took off. But what he shows for Colombia, what this Colombia team is capable of is really great. I mean, it was a corner of James that Cordoba heads in after eight minutes and then just four minutes later as a penalty given and James himself commercial penalty. It's 2 nil after 15 minutes. That settled the game. Yes, there was a good chance for Panama in there. It didn't make it over the line. And James Rodriguez plays a very quick free kick behind midfield onto Luis Diaz, lobs it into net, 3 0 after 41 minutes. And then it was just parading and seeing how high we can run up the score. In the end, it's a 5 0. Rios and Miguel Borja, who also converts a penalty deep in stoppage time. It was just one way traffic. Still, great tournament for Panama. Qualifying for the quarterfinals is more than you could, could expect, but they were completely outmatched by his Colombia side. And even if the United States would have qualified there, I don't think they would have gotten a much better result. And then, yeah. One Brazilian player called it a South American Super Classico. I'm not sure if you want to diss Argentina with that in the pros about Uruguay against Brazil. That's big time. And it was super physical. There was no Vinny Jr. So Andre got a little feel of how it is to play against Uruguay. And Uruguay lived up to the reputation that they have built over the years, which is a little bit of a shame because in the group stage, they show us the brilliant stuff that we can play Bielsa style soccer. No, this time around, we went all Uruguayan style soccer, which is physically a lot of fouls it was not a pretty game it was one free kick after another however also Ronald Arujo for Uruguay had to come off injured he might be out for the tournament which might play majorly against Uruguay Uruguay probably had the best chance of the match when a header by Darwin went just over the crossbar I think there was one shot on goal in the first half by Brazil the game seemingly tipped when Nandes got sent off after a really rough foul on Rodrigo and so Brazil were 20 minutes with a man more but couldn't do anything with it goes to penalties and yeah that went Uruguay's way. Well, Verde converts. Eda Militao sees his effort saved. Pentecope Pereira and De Arasqueta all converts. So it's 3 1 and Douglas Luis misses. So Jimenez can put Uruguay through. However, his effort is also saved. So Martinelli pulls one back for Brazil. However, Ugarte sends Uruguay through to the next round. Brazil are out. And Brazil have to be the Mexico and the United States considered the big disappointment of this tournament. They never showed up except for once, I would say, against Paraguay. But they didn't get a win against Costa Rica. They had a good winning show against Paraguay, although it looked not good for half an hour there as well. Against Colombia, 
Colombia were overall better. Yes, the game ended in a draw, but Colombia were overall better, I have to say. Although, if the refereeing decisions go the right way, Brazil probably will have won that one as well. So, major soul searching in Brazil at the moment. I hope they stay with Dorival Jr. and figure it out because, you know, another coaching change will throw even more chaos into Brazil. Brazil will qualify for the World Cup. And you know, the last time they were reeling for qualifying for the World Cup, they actually won the darn thing. So hold the horses, just try to be calm for once Brazil. But this was not a great showing. And I'm also worried now a little bit about Uruguay because this Colombia team is different. But I expect another nasty affair in their semifinals. So we have the two semifinals, we already said, in East Rutherford, at least the New York area. That's the stadium where the World Cup final will play. Argentina play Canada. And then in Charlotte, North Carolina, a stadium that I know very well. Uruguay will play Colombia. That's probably the, by name the better one. And I think both teams have the potential to deliver a classic here. I can also very well see this descending into chaos. In any case, please let me know your thoughts on the Copa America. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!